Every portrait, I think, tells a story because everyone has their own story. And everyone has a different life and they have different stories to tell. You think you know somebody, but you never really know what they're going through or what they've gone through. I didn't start in the arts until I was like 21 years old. Or I studied printmaking. I did a whole lot of ceramics and glass blowing as well. Printmaking processes like stone lithography, copper plate etching, woodcut, or relief printing, screen printing. And then I've been at this since 2019. This process like never stopped, which is really interesting. Like some people will say it stopped, but there's always reenactors and always people that are using this process, probably still in like Eastern Europe. You know, after the 1880s and after the Civil War ended, this process kind of became something that would be at fairs or carnivals. As photography became more affordable and more accessible for like everyday means, this process became like kind of obsolete relatively quickly. They say that there's about 600 people in the world that like do this regularly. So it feels good to like be a part of that. But I think what's really exciting is that I could still do this process and still have modern lights and um, modern scanners. One, two, three. And just that conversation in between uh, like the historic processes and the contemporary process. And I think this process really gives me an opportunity to talk to anybody about the process and kind of like, doesn't matter where we're at or what we're doing, everyone seems pretty interested. In, and I feel lucky and fortunate to be able to, to share this process with people. You guys are probably know about taking photos in a phone, right? And that wouldn't be a thing if this process was never invented. So this is kind of like, this is the third major photographic process that was ever invented. It was invented in 1851. Frederick Scott Archer invented this process. He was a coin sculptor. So imagine living in the era where you're like, I'm gonna invent this process so the pictures of my coins look better. Historically, tintypists are uh, not photographers, right? Because photographers are working from a glass plate negative. So you're, they're able to reproduce multiple images from one negative where a tintypist is going to be uh, making one single image. So with me not having a background in photography, I like to kind of run with that. And I'm historically a tintypist. To make a tintype, we need some salted collodion to be specific. It has uh, two metallic salts in the collodion. The collodion kind of dries as like a skin or a surface, and the collodion is more or less like a vehicle for the metallic salts. The collodion with the salts will go into the silver nitrate bath for about three to five minutes. Silver halides will be produced, and those are light sensitive. And those will eventually go into a plate backer that goes into the back of the camera. And I'll pull up the, the dark side of the slide and take the exposure. One, two, three. Wow. It's like getting punched in the face with light. Right. Once I have the plate exposed, I will take it into the dark room, open the plate holder up, and then I will grab the plate and I will splash a little bit of developer onto the plate and kind of watch the image develop. Once it has developed thoroughly, I will stop the development with water. And then that's when we're going to go out into like UV again. And that's the kind of the most exciting process is the next step where we'll take that out into the natural light and we'll drop that into some fixing solution. Whoa, that is crazy. I mean, it's always special, especially that last step of the, of the fixing. Like some people will just like really scream in excitement. One, two, three. I've had uh, people, men and women, both cry when they see the photos. Seeing this old photo, and I thought it would be a super grainy, like, not a well, you know, processed photo, and it's probably the best photo I've ever seen of myself. Amazing quality for its time, like, even for today. And I've never seen myself in that way before, where you can't, like, pin a generation to it or a timeline. And him explaining, like, you know, digital photos now, it's kind of a reversal. And I feel like looking at that photo, that's how I see myself. The thing that about this process is you see yourself in the tintype exactly how you see yourself in the mirror. The camera that I use today is a 1980 Sinar, a 4x5 large format camera. The lens there is uh, from 1853. And just imagine that lens and what it's photographed and how many people's eyes it's focused on. In a way, it's being very much like a showman or a roadside attraction. 
And this is kind of like the perfect place where I can like be a mad chemist, be a photographer, but and also capture your spirit. So if I'm taking my show on the road, I'll take one of my several little portable dark rooms. I have small dark rooms that are about four by three feet wide. I think uh, the coolest project that I've gotten into so far is my partner, Susanna Crum. We've been doing this project called On the Map, and we've documented nine historic locations of post offices in the state of Kentucky. Some of those are still in operation, some are abandoned, and some are just fields at this point. Really, you weren't a town until you had a post office, and that kind of put you on the map. So I'm still finding my own like voice in this process because I'm still learning so much about photography, but I will make a tintype now and things will go wrong and I will understand why they've gone wrong. And for so long, like I didn't understand and it. I'm really interested to see like where my work goes artistically. Just like, I love making portraits. Like it's really fun. Being a portrait photographer is so far from anything that I ever thought I would do, but it's been really nice to meet all these people. And every portrait's individual, one of a kind. Hey everybody, I'm Chip Holston and I am cherishing this Kentucky life. And if you enjoyed that story and would like to see more, click right here to see more.